during the latter part of the 20th century on a small planet called Earth, the third from the Sun, in a solar system of the Milky Way, a strange occurrence took place on the island of Sardinia. Steady, boy. Steady. event would alter the lives of every living thing on the planet. And so we have another case where the solution of a scientific problem creates a grave moral issue for society, something which happens all too frequently in our field. Einstein's theory established the relativity of time and space and mass energy in relation to velocity as indicated in your text, chapter 7. Moreover, with the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, it was actually proven that an infinitesimal amount of uranium could produce a chain reaction and destroy an entire city. Where are we going, Dad? To the Department of Advanced Geological Studies. Did they say what they wanted? No, Professor, they didn't. They were very reserved. In fact, almost mysterious. Mmm, how exciting. Concentrate on your driving, Louisa. Look at that funny car. Isn't that an old Chrysler? How wide is it? About 15 yards, up to yesterday at any rate. I have to give you yesterday's figure, because so far today we haven't measured it. However, there's no question about it. It's growing every day. Where, at Marino? Yes, about eight miles from the village. Well, how long have your men been out there? Three months now. We've built a hut, installed a laboratory, taken samples of the earth and dried plants, but so far analysis has yielded no concrete results. Well, may I have a look, please? Naturally, Professor. These analyses may surprise you. The soil has the characteristic absence of humus, the lack of anything organic undergoing decomposition, mm -hmm. similar to that in which tobacco or coffee has been grown. It's common in the Americas. And Africa. The deposits of uranium in the Belgian Congo presented the same characteristics. Professor Solmi, mm -hmm. are you telling me that you think... I think only what I said. Nothing more. In Africa, the uranium showed up in the analysis, but here... Uranium here? That'd be nice. Paolo! And the samples you have there? Here you are. Paolo! Wait a moment. Oh. Excuse me. Women. Come over here. I'm coming. What is it? That car, look. What about it? Never seen it before. I have. It followed us here. It's ridiculous. Why should anyone follow us? Can you think of a reason? Nope. But they might be secret agents. Come on. Will somebody tell me why I'm always Oh, please hurry. Who was it? 007? Very funny, aren't you? Really, Paolo, a sports car motor is built for speed. Why should we hurry, Louisa? We're in no rush. In any case, we're early as it is. A taxi. Go on, give it a lift. There, there. Calm down, Louisa. Natural exuberance, Professor. Well, step on it. You're not going to let an old thing pass you. <gasps> I suppose this is an example of relativity. Relativity is the reason why when I drive the car, it's like a speed trial in Indianapolis. And when he drives the car, it's just torture. Uh. Be careful for Pete's sake. <laughs> You crazy road hog. What's the idea of cutting me off like that? You're blind or something? What do you some... mean? The road's wide enough. There's plenty of room for two. Yeah, and you took it off. That ain't no way to drive. Let's see. Oh, God. Zoe, this guy don't look like he's breathing. You mean he's dead? Nah, he ain't dead. He just looks like he's dead. Now, how am I going to get him to the hospital with this car all wrecked? Need any help? That'd be real kind of you. Are you going to the airport? Yeah. 
Uh, good. There's a first aid place over there. Come on, give me a hand, you. Yeah, sure. You and your friend saw everything, didn't you? Yeah, sure. I'm not surprised it finished up like this. They did it deliberately. Yeah? What makes you think so? Because for one thing, I noticed that the truck started going slower. When he still hadn't even got all the way past the taxi. So what? And besides the way those two behaved, the truck driver hardly said anything. He should have been chewing a piece out of the other man's behind. Louisa! Well? Uh, don't get upset, Professor. It's a symbol of her liberation, you see. Hmm. Well, let's hurry, Paolo. We'll have to reach Marino where there's still plenty of light. If we want to get a good look at this thing. How much of this does he need, Doctor? Two cc's will probably be sufficient for him. Well, thank you. There's no need to well, you've just been in an accident. Well, I'm fine now. Sorry they bothered you. So long. But you still have to pay. No, not so far. Time for another one. Yeah, okay. We better, uh... Here's the telephone, though. The boss might pop in. Wait a minute. There was this car accident. Do I know that one? I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Mm. So the guy who was hit says, hey, mister, what is this? Ain't you got a horn? And the other one answers, yeah, sure, I got a horn. I just never got my license. Well, we still remember our Morse code, I guess. Girls, we have forgotten. Boy, when do we get our next break? Hey, I have to go now. They're just arriving. So long. Come on, dude. Professor Somi. Hello, boys. Hello, May I help you, Louisa? No, thank you. I never give this to anyone. I hope Father gets his work done quickly. I mean, staying here overnight isn't exactly my idea of fun. Is it true that you work in the movies? Ah. <laughs> Surprise. Savannah. Where did you hear that? I suppose the news just travels. Uh, evidently, it travels at the speed of light. Uh, yeah. That's far enough. Hmm. 
Connect that up to the amplifier. know this, that a large hollow space has somehow been formed in this area under the delineated zone. Perhaps the waters of an underground river, which has long since disappeared, could have caused this phenomenon through continual erosion. Another possibility, always hypothetical of course, would be a shift of volcanic magma. In other words, this hollow could be quite natural if the high concentration of radioactive organisms didn't force me to consider a more sinister explanation. What? That's the problem. What? The peculiar sound. Gobbledygook. It was like someone kind of gasping. Hey, Pop, you want coffee too? Uh, yes, dear, thanks. But it's a bit late, isn't it? Hmm? Well, I guess so. Forget it. What's got, what's got into all of you? Nothing. We've just been waiting for the coffee. What do you think we should do, Professor? I think we should go to bed now. We're all very tired. We'll have to ask for an excavator. Start digging. But we're supposed to go back to town tomorrow. No, we'll have to stay for a few days. What's wrong? Another engagement? No. No, I don't have anything to do. Have a good sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I gather you haven't told him that you're trying to get work in a movie. You're a real nudge. Go to bed. What do you make of it? I don't know yet. We'll go have a look. Professor, there's a tunnel. Where? Where we put in the stakes. It's caved in. Get the Geiger counter. And gather everything that we'll need. Hurry. I'm going ahead. Yes, Professor. Father, what's going on? You'd better wait here. Not on your life. I wouldn't miss this for anything. Professor, you're using that Geiger counter as if it were a compass. Where is it going to lead us? Read straight ahead if you feel like following it. Whatever you say. Of course. All right, this way. Paolo? Hey, Paolo. What's wrong? See this? So what? Sign of water. And so? Paolo! Professor, look at this. How would you explain these striations? Well, that might tie in somehow with what we're trying to figure out now. Look at all those colors. Like something out of a movie. Oh, Louisa. 
dreamy. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> A nightmare. Now check that side. There are no passages there. Then this is no way out the here. Tunnel. There. Point your lights toward it. Prop them and start digging. Boys, there's no use going on. We're just wasting our energy. We'll just have to come back with machinery, that's all. There's no rest for the weary. Be careful with the guy. Keep up here. Don't worry, Professor. Thanks, Louisa. I guess I was wrong about our efforts. idea what this is. Molybdenum, titanium, or possibly some kind of combination. Would you say an alloy? In all likelihood, yes. It curves perfectly. This is definitely machine-made work. Careful! No, that's not what it is. An atomic bomb shelter? Let's have a look in there. Force it open. No, not yet. Louisa! Did you ever see the drawings of extraterrestrials they found on the walls of that cave? And of a space rocket they think was used for interplanetary flight. There was a long investigation. I read an article. In some woman's magazine. <laughs> or the comics. But we're on a spaceship. Can't you idiots see that? <laughs> you know, boys, I don't think there's anything to laugh about. Huh? Professor? At this point, I think you'll all agree that any hypothesis, however implausible, deserves our full consideration. Eva il na el trep. Eva il na el trep. Eva il na el trep. We have transmitted directly to your psychoreceptors the structure matrices for the Earth language. Please use it when you answer. Where are Belsi and Arti? They are not out of their hibernation cages yet, but they will soon be restored to full efficiency. You will have to program them with the Earth language matrices, but be careful. Use our language when you speak of things which the Earthmen must not know. I understand. I have bad news. The robots have no hope of survival. I think we've done all we can. Shall we return to the station? Uh, yes. Let's get back to the hut at once. We have to notify the authorities and decide what course of action to take. What the hell's got into this thing? Good luck, Professor. I'll certainly need it. The directors of the Institute will probably think I've gone straight out of my mind, and maybe they're right. Come on, Louisa, hurry up. Ready! <laughs> What's wrong? It won't start. What? You can see for yourself. It was working fine last night. Have a look at the motor while I go telephone. <laughs> no more gas, huh? Oh, yeah? 
Okay, get out of the way. I'll show you how. Doesn't work either. Any luck? The motor looks all right to us. It's a complete mystery. I'll say it is. The phone's out of order, too. Huh. I'll go have a look. Come on. Strange. The terrestrials who discovered our spacecraft will have to repair it for us. They have sufficient skill. But they must come with us afterwards to the Constellation Hive, where they will serve for research. We can't leave our Libretel the Alice course. That's the only robot that survived hibernation. These inferior races have very little physical resistance. You get those two out. Artie and Belsi must disintegrate them. Of course, he doesn't understand. Nirmeteo Belsi Arti Kodos made. I just have no idea. Oh, what a nuisance, damn it. Julio. I think I can guess what's on your mind, sir. Yes, it would be an explanation for all of this. Including those strange sounds we heard. Come on. Raise your hands. All of you. Well, who are you? And what do you want? <laughs> Make no mistake. We are Oriental, not Chinese. We do not represent the People's Republic. That nation has agreed to cooperate with America. Our people are not so gullible. We maintain casa contempt for the more corrupt ways of the West which you would impose on us. We now have information. You have a perfected weapon to invade and overpower us. Unfortunately, you will not get to use it. Not on us or any other people who could be dominated forever if it fell into the wrong hands because of you. Professor Sami, when we first heard of this project of yours, it was very hard for us to believe it. However, we have kept you under surveillance and now you will show us your invention. There is no invention to show. You're quite mistaken, sir. So the rocket you got buried there is purely imaginary. No, you cannot fool us. We know your project will be a secret weapon, and it is my mission to learn how it operates. Now you are to show us. I'll be very sorry, as I will kill you.
said. You two! Hurry up! Still no answer, sir. No doubt those two Romeos spend the whole day on the phone talking to their girls. Still, it is lonely down there. But the line isn't busy. It's dead. It's probably just a short circuit. Try again a little later. Mm. The mission with which we were entrusted was intended to establish whether the ever-increasing number of nuclear experiments on your planet might have dangerous consequences for our galaxy. But our motor developed a fault and we were forced to make an emergency landing at Moreno. Shortly after, it was destroyed by an earthquake. We fell into a resulting crevice and were compelled to go into hibernation. According to your methods of measuring time, we have been here two years, and now the day has come for us to return to our own galaxy. We have two more days at most, and you, Professor Solmi, are going to help us. That's ridiculous. How can I? And to begin with, I'd like to introduce Artie and Belsie, my officers. My name is Kane. As for the rest of our crew, you saw what happened to them. I'm sorry, but I think you're expecting too much of us. For one thing, I'd have to establish the principles on which the... Here's one of the sections of the propelling mechanism of our craft. Take it. You and your assistant will be able to repair it in the thermonuclear laboratories at Hatton. Using the information transmitted to us from our control galactic headquarters, these formulae outline the molecular configurations of the metal called aileron. I do not think it is known to you. The minute our craft has left your planet, I give you my word that you will all be released. Your word? These are teletransmitters. They keep us informed of everything you say and everything you do by sending a picture to our control screens. So we become slaves. Whatever name you like to call it, you have no shortage on this planet. And if I refuse to assist? Hardly. It would be foolish, considering that we will have your daughter prisoner until you get back. Besides, have you ever seen what 10,000 volts of electricity can do to a human body? You're within our power, remember that. By pressing a button over there, I can electrocute anyone who tries to inform any outsiders of our presence here, or who tampers with the transmitter. And I must warn you, you can only hear me while I can observe all you do, everything. So be careful. And now you, Chang, you and your colleague will remain here and carry out the tasks assigned to the robots. That at least is some compensation for the one you shot. Why don't you try it? Oh, it's about time you called. But you could have rung us from the village. The jeep was out of order. Go on, where did you two get to last night? It's the station. Ah, what's the news? Professor Solmi and Dr. Barty are on the way here. I suppose they'll be asking for additional instruments and the ministry has already refused any more expense. And they say that scientists live in a world all their own. Well, after last night. <laughs> it's almost as if we were in a different dimension of time. A dimension that could easily become dangerous. The whole story is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. I can't believe they'll be able to get that thing going again. Don't worry, Professor. We will. Eighteen meters. 
three meters in 24 hours. Undoubtedly, the situation is alarming. But before I ask the ministry for more funds, I'd better visit Marino. No, no. That's hardly necessary. You have the photograph. But the excavators, the earth movers. First, I want to repeat all the analyses. Uh, all right. I'll come along with you. Oh, no, sir. I mean, I can give the professor any assistance he requires. There's no use disturbing you. I have no objection. In fact, I'm very busy. I'll join you the day after tomorrow. Now I'll get this authorization ready. the same thing. This is your room. Oh, how my thing. That's simply delicious. <laughs> but I don't really need all this. I'll only be here till tomorrow at the latest. Oh, by the way, where exactly is the bed? Sleep on that. But what about a mirror? <gasps> ah. <laughs> Professor Solmi, you have altered the molecular structure. Do as part of my job. You put me in an embarrassing position. Would you please explain that? You only spoke of doing simple repair work. And that's what I did do. That's true, but you must realize that I have to make a report on anything as extraordinary as what I've just witnessed going on here in our own laboratory. As director of this institute, I have responsibilities. Uh, listen, Professor Terenzi, when exactly will you have to hand in your report? Tomorrow the latest, I by 10 so. o'clock. In that case, you have nothing to worry about. Before midnight tonight, I'll give you a ring. You may well think that I'm teasing you or that I've taken leave of my senses, but your report will have served its purpose. Uh, thank you. You've been very helpful. But I... Professor, I, uh... Ah, it's you, Belsie. Huh? I... These are for you. Pills, but I feel all right. Your meal's for seven days. Now listen, every once in a while I don't mind dieting, but not on pills. I have my own in case I need them. Besides, who knows where you kept them? In the cooler, no doubt. No, thank you. Pills. Huh. One of you brings some Earth-type food for the professor's daughter. A complete meal at once. Yes, sir, ma'am. This can't stop for at least it's better than pills. No, no, she needs something light. I'll take care of it. Where'd you put the pasta? Huh. Reading of the accumulator motor. 95%. Hydra Central calling spaceship Elsa Baran. This is spaceship Elsa Baran. We are receiving you. Liar Reina is the enemy. Alfred Hydra. Nithada Hada Mahalud. Livrava. So Murder says the Earthman must reach Hydra Central in the best possible condition. Aren't he? Is that not the correct way to say it in the language? That is true. But what if they have overheard us? There is nobody here with us. So how else could they hear us unless you let the transmission switch open? Hmm. Uh, I'd almost lost my appetite, only it smells wonderful. Thank you. Is Dad back? Hmm? No, there's no news. But if these guys aren't making a fuss, it means that everything's okay. I guess that's all. Shh, shh. Here, quick, quick.
Everybody all right? Tell the Institute. Bruno will think it's a joke. He'll never believe it, I can tell you. My, how frightening. Outer space creatures are holding you prisoners? The commander is a girl, you say. And the punchline? When do you get to that? I swear to you, Bruno. I'm not joking about this. You have to send the police here. You'll have to try again. That one's already been used by Orson Welles about the world being invaded by monsters from another planet. But I'm not falling for it. What's going on? Listen to this, sir. Hear for yourself. You tell him off. Every joke has a limit. Professor Solmi had to keep quiet. He couldn't say a word. They're holding his daughter as hostage. And they've threatened to kill us all. If you want proof, just look at the molecular structure of the metal the professor had this morning. Good God. Why is the screen gone dark? What's going on down there? We were both looking for a microscope slide that fell on the floor underneath the table. I guess when we leaned forward, the, uh, the vision got cut off. If it happens again, we won't accept any excuses. It won't. Come aboard, you two. Come aboard at once. Did you all hear that? Do you believe us now? Do something quick, hurry! Hurry! There was no need for you to do that. It means our crew will be one man short. You have been warned. Either obey us or suffer the fate of your companion. members of our crew have to be replaced. The duties they performed at the propulsors will be elementary to men of your intelligence. The crew will consist of your two Chinese friends, Professor Solmi and you. Take your place. Not at all. Not at all. 
Over here, everyone. This way. Let's go. This means we're not. No, beyond. The girl simulated weight as Belsie was done with all the others. Oh, hell, heights make me dizzy. Oh, how long do I have to stay up here? Why don't you do something? This I is the second stand. mistake you've made. Please get me down. Please! Help! <laughs> uh, one of my uniforms. This is the control room calling. Commander speaking. Attention. Professor Sorby and Mr. Morelli can now leave their places. Belsey? Artie will now take over from you. Thank you, Professor. We appreciate your cooperation during blast off. Ikrin ready ladder. Now we'll be able to repair our video.
Depolitatum an lapensu itu, savati itatatum. Ilian patam katos itram putal patatam. Ritil mal kidu, amor lyser pretoke, peren vestor vel hydra. Do you mind revealing what that was all about? Not at all. It was the commanding officer at Hydra Central. He congratulated us for undertaking the repair work and said we will certainly be remembered when the Council on Genetics holds its next selection hearings to pick suitable subjects for breeding. that if I had revealed my intention to substitute the lost robots with the only possible surrogates available to us and indispensable for blast-off proceedings, you almost certainly would have objected and we would undoubtedly have remained on the crust of your planet. But I assure all of you, we shall take you home as soon as we can and I'm certain you will have enjoyed your experience. Yeah. Pity that Julia won't be able to enjoy the fun. We had warned all of you. You can consider the death of your colleague in the nature of a suicide. All very easy, but I am not to be convinced by you that my death will be a case of suicide. Yeah. There is not even one particle of truth in the words she is telling you. This trip for us is one way. She has forced us to go along on this trip with her because of one thing. She was commanded to. Guinea pigs. That's what they want us for. And what proof do you have, Jane? I don't say it. It is true. I heard they make very silly mistakes, and their equipment can go wrong very easily, the same way as our electric irons. <coughs> when one of their switches does not work, it leaves open the microphone of the control room. And you, always so serious, such well-conditioned officer, Descended out of the sky from the constellation Hydra. Tell us everything. You gave yourself away repeating your commander's order, didn't you? No, of course not. Why don't you kill us? By now we can't be of much use to you. You take me for a criminal. That is not the point now. What we want to make clear is this. You see, we have to arrive living and in perfect condition of physical health. Be quiet. But why should he? Apparently you don't realize how much my father and the others, let's say terrestrials, including me, know about piloting your craft. We can take charge. Lara Minasson, Anki Renard Minasson. I don't know what she said. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one thing to do. Let's go, Franco. <laughs> <laughs> Tracking on the craft. It's veering radically off course. Request directives. Urgent. Pegasus, this is Starfleet Command. Suggest you check attitude control system against GPI. The craft is still on our computer radar scan. Roll and maintain proper heading of zero niner zero. Survival of our planet hangs in the balance. Increase your speed regardless of fuel consumption. We cannot lose track of this ship. We're sending a backup to continue pursuit and refuel your craft for your return journey. Do you read? We read you, Fleet Command. We are following course 090 at increased speed, accelerating to warp factor 5. Star Cruiser Scorpio, take over pursuit and tracking of craft. You are clear for liftoff. Scorpio to Fleet Command. We copy. Begin VSTAR liftoff ignition. Two to base. 
please acknowledge. We are forced to return to base. Base to Pegasus 2. You are not cleared for return. Do you read me, Pegasus 2? That's an order. Acknowledge. Do you copy? It is imperative you continue this pursuit. Star Cruiser Scorpio to Fleet Command. Tracking spacecraft, but cannot maintain full speed much longer. What's its heading now? Same. If necessary, go ahead at impulse rate. You realize that all our lives depend on this. suggest that we had better remove those bullets right away. Otherwise, I'm afraid they'll lose too much blood. Over there, behind you. Press the third of those buttons on the left. You'll find all that's necessary for an operation and transfusion. I have to go down to the control room. Our rudder blades have been thrown out of rhythm. They'll put us off course. From your behavior, it seems you don't mind being stranded in the infinite. Louisa, you go with her. We won't be able to ask Hydra Central for help. Our space telescreen is broken and Belsie's the only one who can repair it. The radar looks all right. But we've only got the audio to communicate with the motoring room. We've lost track of the ship. Well, let me see if I can pick him up on the scanner. Hmm, this is interesting. We must be in some sort of magnetic field. Well, we've lost him. Giving so much blood, I wonder you don't feel tired. The transfusion's good for me. I'll grow new cells, new energy. Did you know we've been caught in a photon shower and can't get out? Where is it taking us? We're in a spiral orbit around a planet that doesn't appear on our astro charts. We're bound to crash on it. There isn't any way out, except one. But how? By shutting off the fuel supply to the propulsors in a rotating order, we could. But with Artie and Belsi out of commission, everyone, and them too, would have to follow my exact orders. It's the only possible chance. Louisa, come with me. You heard her. Go on, on time. Just don't try anything funny around. We've still got plenty of blood left. About the only way we have to make up for our video is direct sight. I can't move it. Press the button, then spin it to the left. Oh. Is it there? 
Can you find it? Yes, yeah, on our left. Look, quick. Minus 30 to section 6. Minus 1. Minus 2. Minus 4. Reduce to 30%, section 7 and 3. Reduce to 30%, section 7 and 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. We're almost there. This maneuver is more dangerous than a normal touchdown. Careful. Minus 19. To minus three, one, two. I repeat, minus three, one, two. yourself in. I have to get my space suit. I won't be long. Aren't you curious to see what kind of place this is? Of course. Dr. Barton, it's quite probable that there's already an atmosphere on this planet, and if not, we'll create one. But as captain, it's my work to do the preliminary reconnaissance. Nobody open the door of the decompression chamber until I have returned. Is that clear? rudder and the telescreen. Are they repaired? Yes, but there's no reply yet. You mean Hydra isn't receiving? I guess so, or not transmitting. There must be some explanation. Let's go try them again. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no use staying around this place. It was all right while you and Belsie needed to rest a bit, but now it's time we moved on. But why should we have to risk the unknown at Hydra Central, especially when we have no means of getting in touch with them? Don't waste time arguing over it. We have six against three. We will go back to Earth. To take such a decision, we need more than a majority, I think. We must all agree, yes, all of us, on everything. But why six against three? Artie's with us, aren't you, Artie? With you? I don't know. Go on, I think you know damn well by now. <laughs> the other two. I suppose you know, Professor. If not, Louisa is the best person to tell us that Belsie will come back to Earth with us. <laughs> As for Kaina, we'd better see how Paolo's making out. 
I suppose I looked very silly. Is that Louisa's? <laughs> yes, something she used for that movie. Well, at least it got a laugh out of you. And when a girl like you laughs... It's funny, Kaina. You don't realize the difference it makes. It can change your approach to everything. We don't believe in emotions like laughter. Perhaps we are lacking in your... Sentiments? Oh, that's right. And the one to which you terrestrials give the name love. But what's the point of living that way? It's impossible to reply to a question when one doesn't know the answer. Well, you might try. It looks deserted. I don't understand. And Hydra Central seems deserted, too. They don't even answer on a... Does it really matter much? Craft getting nearer. What can that mean? Probably one of ours. We'll meet on a common trajectory but maintain our velocity superior. We'll reach them before they. We What language are they speaking? I've never heard it. It could be Russian, but I'm not sure. Or Bulgarian? It's definitely a Slav language. Well, I'm not certain which one. Our radio's tuned to their wavelength. Reply to them, Professor. Please, you try, Louisa. This is the Elsa Baran. Can you hear us? He seems to be repeating the same words, like half a sentence. This is spaceship 1A. 40 mission is now... Now he's starting it all over again. Nothing else. Like a broken record. But it just needs another word. Probably it's an adjective. Accomplished or carried out. I wonder if that's it. I think you're right. Bobby and Balsy to the control room. Is it really from Earth? We'll soon find out. Is it very important, do you think? Why is her message left unfinished? That's what's worrying me. I suppose we'll have to abort her. Yes. Balsy, remain at the propulsors. I'll go with you. After all, it's an Earth craft. It concerns us rather than you. Apparently, its propulsors have burned out. It's moving under magnetic attraction. Minus 10 on all rotors.
It has a guidance gyro tail. We can remove our space respirators now. Huh? There's plenty of air in here, and the cabin is pressurized. Huh. What about them? Hmm? Hey, Tovarich! They'll go on riding in this craft to the end of the universe. What do you suppose went wrong? Everything in here looks okay. None of the instruments are broken. I'm certain there's some explanation for it. Can you find out? What are you writing? I want to take down the writing on those signs. The professor can explain to us what these two fellas we're doing on this mission.
It's no use. I can't translate it. Perhaps it's Russian. Or Bulgarian. I already said so. But what if it is? As far as we're concerned, at the velocity at which we're traveling, a few days have passed by. But on the Earth, it's entirely different. It could be weeks, months, years, even decades. And probably all of our various languages have undergone change. Professor, we're quite familiar with the principles of Einstein's theory. But when you heard that message, I believe you understood it. Maybe, maybe. Just don't insist, Kaina. I must repeat that I don't know what these words mean, actually. Professor Solmi, what do you feel about returning to Earth now? What do you mean by asking me that? I alone of the three of us want to go back to my world, in the constellation Hydra. You understand me, don't you? And I think you know that there's something wrong with your Earth. But tell us so we can be ready for it. Please tell us. Please tell us. Very well. The spools of tape from that spaceship tell the whole story. That's odd. Only the Coliseum hasn't changed. The first and last all-out nuclear war, and no one will ever know the story. Nobody except us. How do you suppose it all started? Who knows? It certainly didn't help anyone. It's impossible to stay here. The Earth will be contaminated. We'll all wind up with radiation poisoning. Then the spaceship is our only chance. But where do we head for? We can argue about that when we're a long way away.
doubt it's the center of the constellation Hydra. In the third rotation of the eighth phase of the 1,000th and second cycle, Hydra Central has registered rapidly increasing nuclear pollution of the atmosphere. Was it the effect of atomic explosions? We, having no wish to suffer the consequences of mutations we think are inevitable, have taken to our space fleet for travel to a distant planet where we can construct anew the perfect civilization.